premonitions are impossible, and they come true all the time. The second law of thermodynamics says it can't happen, but you think of your mother and then she calls, or dozens of people witness a catastrophic event that comes true in the following days or weeks. Can people actually see the future? The existence of the British Premonitions Bureau in the United Kingdom and the stories of Alan Hencher and Lorna Middleton might just convince you. Welcome to the Crafty Cryptid, where you can watch DIY crafts and gaming while listening to the darkest and most mysterious tales I can find on the internet. If this sort of thing is up your alley, then subscribe and make sure to click the notification bell, otherwise YouTube will hide my weekly updates from you. Today, I'm going to tell you about the strange and mysterious circumstances surrounding Hencher Middleton and the man who believed they could unequivocally predict the future. Lorna Middleton woke up on the morning of October 21st, 1966, choking and gasping. She had dreamed she was trapped under a mountain of black, unable to breathe or escape. This dream was unlike her usual ones, and carried with it the foreboding feeling that something terrible was about to happen. An hour after Lorna awoke, a landslide avalanched down the mountain above the village of Aberfan, Wales, swallowing buildings whole and burying hundreds of people alive. 144 of those buried died in the landslide, most of them being children, as the junior and secondary schools, which were located at the base of the mountain, took the brunt of the damage after children had already settled into their classes. Could Lorna Middleton's precognitive dream have truly been about the Aberfan disaster? And if so, could her abilities be used to stop future catastrophes from occurring? Elsewhere in the United Kingdom, Alan Hencher, too, had an unshakable feeling that something terrible was going to happen in Aberfan the night before the tragedy took place. In fact, many people reported having visions or dreams about the landslide before it occurred. This sparked the curiosity of Dr. John Barker, a psychiatrist intrigued by the concept that human beings might be able to precog a major event before it occurred. Excited and interested in the evidence he found that multiple people had predicted the Aberfan disaster, Dr. Barker set out to create a new bureau in which he hoped could be used to avert disaster. The British Premonition Bureau took in hundreds of telephone calls from people who claimed to predict the future. Although almost all of these visions had proven to be nothing more than anxiety-given verbiage, there were two individuals, however, who consistently gave correct accounts of future disaster, Lorna Middleton and Alan Hencher. Though not everything that they predicted came true, much of it did, including a terrible plane crash predicted by Hencher. I was hoping not to have to ring you, Hencher said to Barker, but now I feel I must. Hencher was calling to predict a plane crash. He was terribly upset as he recounted his vision, which he claimed that Jesus Christ himself was trying to warn him of. He had a vision of a caravel, a French-built passenger jet, experiencing problems soon after takeoff. It is coming over mountains. It is going to radio that it is in trouble. Then it will cut out. Nothing. Hencher said there would be 123 or 124 people on board and that only one person would survive in, quote, very poor condition. Hencher couldn't tell where the crash was going to happen exactly, 
but he had had the feeling for the last two or three days. Extremely troubled by his vision, Hencher gave Barker every detail he could and prayed that he was wrong. Barker passed on the prediction to the Evening Standard and later appeared on Late Night Lineup, a chat show on BBC Two, to publicize the Bureau of Premonitions. Nine days after Hencher's prediction, a passenger aircraft carrying 130 people attempted to land in Cyprus during a thunderstorm, even though the airport was closed. The airplane was three hours overdue for a refuel, and the pilot felt they had no other options. The control tower glimpsed the plane, its landing lights flashing through the low clouds before it wheeled to the south, and clipped a wing on the side of a mountain, 22 feet from the summit, rolled over, broke into pieces, and caught fire. 124 die in airliner, the Evening Standard reported on its front page the following morning. The final death toll was 126. Two people who survived the initial impact were taken to a nearby UN field hospital, where they unfortunately passed away. At the time, the Cyprus crash was the sixth worst aviation accident in history. Barker noticed the similarities between the plane crash and Hencher's predictions immediately. It had been a passenger plane. 124 people had died, initially. The plane had been over the mountains, had radioed to the tower that it was in trouble, the radio cut out, and the airliner had crashed. The Evening Standard published an account of Hencher's premonition alongside the news coverage that day. The incredible story of the man who dreamed disaster, the headline read. It seemed John Barker had found proof that precognition could be used to predict future disaster and possibly avert it. Unfortunately, Barker would not get the chance to pursue the Bureau's mission for much longer. On the night after the plane crash, Alan Hencher called Barker in a panic. He sounded agitated, and the operator wanted to put him through. The future of the Premonitions Bureau and Barker himself changed direction when Hencher came on the line. As the psychiatrist wrote in an anguished memo the following day, quote, I suppose anybody who plays about with precognition in this way, to some extent, sticks his neck out and must accept what he gets." Unquote. Hencher told Barker that he was concerned for his safety. He had been worried about him all day, that there might be some kind of car accident. When Hencher thought of Barker, his mind filled with something black. "'Have you a dark car?' Hencher asked. Barker's zephyr was dark green. Be very careful, Hencher warned. Look after yourself. Barker asked Hencher if he was telling him that his life was now in danger. Yes, the seer replied. Time passed and nothing happened to John Barker. However, in early 1968, Hencher told Barker that his life was still in danger and that he was convinced the doctor would die soon in Yockleton. Then, on February 7th of that same year, Lorna Middleton, the Bureau's other extremely accurate clairvoyant, had a vision of Barker lying next to her dead parents, a vision that persisted for a week. A few months later, Middleton had another dream about her dead parents driving a dark car and warning her that someone close to her was about to pass away. Though these dreams and visions had gone on infrequently for nearly two years, both Middleton and Hencher were 100% convinced that some accident would befall Dr. Barker soon. They were right. On August 18th of 1968, Barker suffered a brain hemorrhage at his home in Yackleton, just as Hencher predicted. On the day that the psychiatrist died, Middleton found herself awake in the early hours. She was choking and gasping for breath. Barker was taken to Copthorne Hospital in Shrewsbury, where he died. Later, his body was carried to the gravesite in a hearse, 
perhaps the dark car that Henter saw and that Middleton's own dead parents were driving in her vision. After the death of John Barker, the Bureau continued to operate, though its work dwindled over time into nothingness. The psychic foresight of Middleton and Hensher continued, and they were able to reveal a number of true predictions, including the killing of Robert Kennedy and the death of the Russian cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov. It seems that Dr. Barker's work was for naught, but even the doctor himself had doubts about whether or not his bureau should continue its mission. Barker was plagued with the question of whether or not these visions could even be stopped. In a letter he wrote to a friend, he asked, What if Mr. Hensher is right again? But how can we stop it? If we could, then Mr. Hensher would not be warned of this possible terrible tragedy in the way he was. If only we could get more information. If only we had more details. If only. I hope you enjoyed this video. To be notified when I post next, click subscribe and ding the notification bell, otherwise you'll miss my weekly uploads. My schedule has changed a little bit, and now I will be posting on the weekends, Saturday or Sunday, rather than Thursday or Friday. Leave a like and a comment for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching, and come back soon, cryptids.